in case you're wondering, yes, the hinges did get a little bit gummed up there, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. I'm getting quite good at judging what quantity of Gorilla Glue I need. I mean, how much it's going to puff up, because I've used it so much. Uh, so hopefully it's just going to stay at about this level of flexibility after I glue the other side in as well. Okay, I have the ailerons glued in now, and it looks like I judged the amount of glue just right because there was no puffing or um, bulging of the glue coming out here to glue the hinges together. So they're stiff enough that it'll stay where you put it, but pretty light movement otherwise, so yeah, just right. Um, and there seems to be a pattern forming here where everything on the left wing goes just perfectly, and almost everything on the right wing ends up just not quite how I wanted. So what we have on the left wing, everything's lining up nicely here, and when it folds down, or up, whichever way, um, it still remains flush with the surface of the wing. So the leading edge of this control surface is sort of rounded off, and there's no gap or anything in there either. It's uh, ended up quite nice, pretty much perfect. Um, over here though, unfortunately, we have a bit of a gap especially when it folds down. Uh, this is just from getting a little bit too overzealous with the sanding paper there and a little bit there as well. There are a few comments in that first video about potential problems with the vertical fins breaking when landing on them, but I don't really see why that should be a problem, as long as they are made with the intention of being landed on. A good example is the mini talon here, so you're landing on the fin, well, yeah, most of the time you sort of, if you're doing a little bit of a flare when you're landing, this will be the first thing that hits the ground. Um, and it's not really an issue because it's made to do that, so it's, uh, well, to be honest, out of the box this didn't, <laughs> didn't work out very well, I've had to change it a little bit and strengthen it, and there's some massive gobs of glue on there, but uh, it has been working quite nicely since then, and uh, yeah, I don't think it should be an issue. I actually quite like the way this makes the landing, um, it sort of straightens out your landing because you have a, a sharp sort of a directional piece there and a smooth non-directional bit here, and it sort of acts like a, a keel or, or, or a um, like the fins on a surfboard to sort of make it straighten out as you land. Uh, actually has a quite a nice effect that I quite like. Um, I won't get that effect on my plane because the fins are not in the center. There's sort of one on each side. So if I'm landing a little bit crooked and, and the fin on this side touches first, it's actually going to turn the plane around a bit in that direction. So it's not, not going to work quite like this does uh, unless the fins both touch the ground at the same time. Uh, another comment was that the front of the plane here is going to slam down on the ground as soon as the tail fins catch. And <coughs> that is a little bit more of a valid complaint I think, but again as long as you've constructed the plane with the intention or the expectation of that happening um, shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to put some fiberglass on the section here where uh, that will be hitting the ground like that. I'm just making the vertical fins now and this is what I'm going to go with here. It's 3mm plywood and I'm going to put a little bit of glass on each side and uh, probably some unidirectional carbon like that to keep it stiff. As you can see, this is the trailing edge of the wing here. So all of this area is going to be behind the wing. Um, my first design that I think I showed you in one of my earlier videos uh, was that. And I hadn't really thought about it too much at the time. I just sort of quickly drew it up. Um, but it seems like this area here, this is where it's going to be landing on. Um, so this is going to be worn away quite quickly if it's a sharp point like that. So I thought I'd move to something that was a little bit rounder and a little bit sort of smoother overall in, in this area. And I also wanted to make it so that the area of the fin was as much as possible behind the wing or to the rear so as to act like a, a tail rather than just sort of fins. Um, 
So this is my next design, which basically does that. I think it's a similar area to that, but it just, just sort of squashes it to the rear and smooths it out at the bottom there. But when I printed out this thing on paper and put it on the plane, it just looked a little bit too small. So what, I've gonna, what I'm going to go with is this one, which is basically the same as that, except it has a sort of a lump stuck on the top as well, like that. And it's, uh, yeah, looks like that. Unfortunately, it's quite heavy. The two fins are already 82 grams, just the plywood alone. So it's <laughs> going to be a lot heavier than I wanted. And I was even considering cutting out some of this here because you only, you only really need that strong strength in this section here. Um, so you could actually cut this out and maybe just put a bit of covering film across it or fill it with um, uh, the XPS foam and then glass it there or something. But for the weight that it's going to save, I don't think it's really going to be worth it. So I'll just take the hit on the CG moving backwards and hopefully my battery will be heavy enough that I can um, not have to worry about that too much. Many hours later. Okay, the plane is officially ready to fly, and tomorrow's weather looks pretty good, although it's quite foggy right now, so I think it's going to be one of those days where we have to wait until about midday before we get any decent visibility. Um, but should be able to get some flying done. The fins fit on there pretty nicely, eventually, and as you can see, I've used some of that vector tape kind of carbon. Uh, I was planning to use a 25mm plane unidirectional carbon, but I actually ran out of it, so had no choice. Well. <laughs> Unless I wanted to go shopping again, this is uh, the only thing I had. And it's not, not a bad thing to be using here. Mostly what I wanted was, like I said, stiffness in this direction. Um, yeah, anyway, they fit on there pretty good. They're nice and strong. It was a little bit overkill, really. I probably didn't need quite that much reinforcement, but it's quite nice that um, I can pick it up like this. Well, with two hands, of course, if I'm not holding the camera. And I can lift it up with the plane fully loaded and the battery right up the front and it's, there's no flexing or bending or creaking funny noises or anything like that. I just pick it right up and it just feels like one nice solid rigid block. It's really quite nice that they are so strong. So um, keeping in mind that we're going to be landing on them, it's not a bad thing that they are a little bit stronger than they need to be. The prop, um, as you can see here, is about two millimeters off the ground. Um, one nice thing about designing a plane around specific parts, for example an 8 inch prop in this case, is that you can get everything exactly how you want. So with the fins here, I've got 2mm clearance. Um, I didn't want too much more because, like I said, I wanted the area of the fins to be more to the back rather than down. Um, what else have we got going on? So I tested the motor, gave it a spin up to about, I think I did full throttle at 4S. And it wobbles a bit, little bit at low frequency, but when the throttle goes up apart, past about quarter throttle, it's fine. And there's actually, the weak dimension of this mount is, is like that. So if I push with my thumb, pushing that way, that's the dimension that it's weakest in. But I found that when the motor gets spinning, uh, it's actually this torque direction that the motor is giving the most force in. And it's actually, this motor, uh, the mount is actually quite strong in that torque dimension, so I think it'll be all right. <clears throat> uh, the motor wires are going in there like that, it's just a bit of hot glue to hold them there. 
Uh, can't really hot glue to this foam very well, unfortunately. It just sort of sizzles and disappears. So I've put a, another little dab of hot glue just there to hold this bit. Unfortunately, these motor coupling things ended up right here. Uh, so it's kind of blocking the airflow. I was hoping to get a little bit more airflow coming out here to cool down the insides. Uh, the insides are looking like this, rather spacious. So right at the moment I have the battery all the way out the front. Uh, ESCs in the side there, receivers just under here and there's plenty of room back there still. Plenty of room over here, I might put the GPS in here when I eventually put the uh, flight controller in. Uh, so that's the battery in the fully forward position and I have another looks like about another nine centimeters that can go back before it hits the flight controller. So I've got plenty of room to adjust it and it is a little bit nose heavy at the moment. Well, <laughs> that's the question that I have to figure out now is where should the CG be? Uh, according to the software program that I'm using it should be about here. So what I think I might do to start with is put it right here on this leading edge where the uh, hard point is here and that will be a good point of reference so to do that I'd actually move the back battery back just a little bit I think and it, <coughs> it will put it about there anyway we'll figure that out all out tomorrow when we go flying well slight change of plans I was intending to use this 4S 5 amp hour battery because I bought it specifically for this build uh, since I didn't have any uh, forest packs around this size already, but this battery's been really annoying right from the begin beginning. For one thing, I didn't really want this particular brand. I wanted one of those multi-star low C packs, but they don't seem to be making them anymore. So I had to settle for this, and then it took seven weeks to get here, three weeks to get from Australia to New Zealand, and then four weeks to get from Auckland to here. <sighs> Sometimes I miss Japan. <laughs> you know, they don't have a bunch of incompetent idiots running the service industry. Um, and uh, yeah, now when I put it on to charge, the last cell is, is useless. So it's really only a three cell battery. <coughs> All right, so we're gonna have to use this, which is a three cell battery. This is a, sort of the closest thing I have that might be reasonable to, to run it with, which is, uh, it's 100 grams or so lighter. So that should make things a little bit easier to keep it in the air, but um, I'm not too happy about the CG because it means I can't really get it quite far as forward as I might like. Well, it's a beautiful day and a light breeze, but unfortunately there's a mob of bulls in a rather awkward spot there, right on the middle of the runway, so I uh, can't really land where I would have liked to, but I do want to launch from here, so I'll launch that way, that's the wind coming from there, and I'll either do a downwind landing on this flat patch here, relatively flat patch here with short grass and lots of cow shit, or I might do a crosswind landing coming slightly uphill into long grass and no cow shit. Or if it really looks bad and I have to do a, like a perfectly into the wind landing, I'll land way down there uh, where the sort of the car tracks are. I am quite apprehensive about launching this thing because it's too big for a frisbee launch. And the only other way to do it really is like this, but as you can see it's all just flat on the bottom. And there's not that much grip on this uh, packing tape that I've got here. But I'm hoping it will be enough. Full back on the stick. Oh, I just needed a bit more speed. Feels like there's not really that much yaw stability, despite those fins. It's a very wallowy feeling. And it's in need of a, quite a bit of trim. But it's flying at just under half throttle, that's nice. Yeah, it wants to tip over, eh? Like when you roll it to the side, it just wants to keep rolling. You gotta, whoa, see, I wasn't doing that. Seems fairly efficient though, like half throttle on 3S, 8x6 prop, 1250 kV motor. Let's turn the motor off here and see what a glide does. Uh, this is downwind by the way, so it's going a bit faster than it would otherwise. See if I can turn it around. Oh, <laughs> there's me trying to use the rudder, which I don't have. Okay, now we're gliding upwind. Uh, 
Not bad. Probably not quite as good as I was hoping for. Let's do a glide from there. Come past over the top of us, not too low. Is it fluttering? The prop is supposed to be stopped, but it's not. It has a funny feeling that it's like, I don't know how to describe it, it doesn't feel very precise when you try and turn. It's like it's skidding out. Yeah, and it seems to be fluttering a bit too. Well, that's a pretty good glide. I wish that prop would stop. Yeah, I think this will be able to thermal. At this weight, at least. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit sort of unsteady feeling, you know? Maybe better at speed? Bottomed out my trim and fortunately it seems to be okay now. See, this is hands off. Not quite though. And throttle is about 55%. Hands off again. So it's, no, it still needs to be a little bit more to the left. Pitch is reasonably good though now. Right, let's see if we can glide over here. Oh, easy, easy. This is downwind too. I suppose I should try stalling it, shouldn't I? Full back on the stick motor off. Uh, no tip stall at least. And I'm fairly well in control of the roll as well. Perfect. Oh, nice, it's pretty good actually. I've done, I'm full back on the stick the whole way here, see? That's what I was hoping for. So this is a... I, I, in the theory, this should be because of those twisted down wingtips. Uh, so that, in theory, makes the nose drip f droop first. <laughs> My nose is actually dripping a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's quite cold, but... Um, yeah, that should prevent a tip stall, so it looks like it's doing alright. Is it fluttering? Why is that? See if we can do that again, I'll see. See if we can get a little bit faster and see if that flutter shows up again. Here we go. Okay, it didn't do it that time. seeing what it did when I pulled up with no motor. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the easiest plane to fly that I've had. It's, uh, you got to keep an eye on it. It does still have that tendency to sort of roll a little bit too much when you start rolling, but um, it's well within the, the realm of something that a flight controller could easily handle, which is what I was mainly worried about, because if you make a plane that's like it's so badly behaved that RG Pilot can't really ha handle it then well that really sucks doesn't it? See it fluttering? I suppose I should try a little bit of full throttle okay level flight full throttle climbing a lot so I'm, I'm nosing pushing the nose down here but uh, otherwise no problems all right let's uh, let's do a practice landing run I need to figure out how slow I can get it
Okay, that that's feasible and it would be nice, but there's rocks over there. I don't want to scrape the bottom of the plane on the rocks. So let's try a, a landing approach from the other place that I talked about. Uh, I don't like this much. I can't see it very well. Actually, you know, I can see the shadow. It might might work out might work out okay. Oh, it's wobbly. Jeez. So, I think I'll try landing over there, but I think we're good to, should be good to go here. Oh shit, did you see that? This is what I was worried about. You can't tell how far away the thing is. I, I should have waited until I could see the shadow, because then that would have told me exactly how high above the ground it was. Well, here's where that ended up. You can see from this angle here, it would have come just over this large fence post there. So it's coming in at that angle, and I had the motor on a little bit too, but amazingly, it doesn't seem like anything is even a tiny bit damaged. So we should be good to good to go again. I'm not so confident about this launch because it's just flat ground, so I don't have the, the hill down below me to help. Oh! oh. <laughs> Thank you, ground effect. Did you see that? <laughs> I didn't think it was going to get up off the ground quick enough. So I gave up and I cut the motor. And then it settled into ground effect and it just kept going. And there's a... There's a hill there. Like there's a slope down. So it lifted out over that downward slope and it was up in the air, nicely. I'm not sure if it went under the fence. Yeah, it would have actually. It probably went under that top wire there. All right, hands off. Left, still hands off. Hands off, hands off. All right, yeah. So if I could just trim it a little bit more to the left Oh. Oh shit, is the battery sagging? Yeah, I think battery sagging. Oh my goodness. Come back. Oh, the battery's just totally dying now. Why would that be? How long was I flying for? Did I just ruin my new battery? Come on. ESC is cold. Motor is a little bit warm actually. Or is it? I don't know. No. It's fine. Um, yeah, so I think the vertical fins need to be even bigger. Maybe even about half as big as they are again. And that might sort out the, the sort of a, what do you call it? Hanging the tail? Or maybe that's because it's tail heavy. Yeah, so um, I think I might just leave leave it for now for this video. We've seen that it flies reasonably well and I'll just experiment with some CG changes and uh, maybe put a flight controller in it for next time see how that goes. Anyway thanks for watching see you next time. Well that's weird the battery is perfectly fine it actually still has quite a lot of life left in it really but I distinctly felt a sudden lack of power so yeah, I don't know what it could be. The ESC wasn't even a tiny bit warm. The motor was barely ambient temperature. Maybe I was just imagining it. <laughs> Who knows? Well, anyway, bye.